What's the word, y'all? The Clippers are rebranding, y'all. Now, the name is still the same, but new jerseys, new logos, and it's happening at the perfect time. As we all know, the Intuit Dome, the new arena for the Clippers is opening up at the beginning of the next season, and I felt like they needed something. They couldn't give these old vibes off in a brand new arena, and they're doing that. Steve Ballmer and them, they, they decided to announce it, and I think the announcement time is pretty interesting, but let's take a look. Now, this is an entire article by Zach Lowe. Um, oh, man, people are laughing at it. Oh, most people love it. Okay. 5,000 people love it, and there's 29 people that's laughing. And I got an assumption that the 29 people that are laughing are, are, are Lakers fans. Maybe not. All right, let's take a look. Now, this is what the Clippers logo used to look like. I always hated this logo. It was bad. But as long as your fan base enjoyed it, that's all that matters. This logo was not for me. I'm not rooting for this team on a nightly basis. Um, even they, they talk about it here, mostly panned as generic and bland. And I completely agree. Now, the new logo doo -doo -doo, is here. Uh, they completely buy into the name of a clipper. This is supposed to be a naval ship in the middle. Kind of gives off cruise ship a little bit, but I, I'm here for it. Um, I can't say that I love it. I'll be honest with you, but it's way better than this one. And that's all that really matters. This is so bad. This is a lot better. I actually like the global logo where you have the Los Angeles Clippers written out. I think this is beautiful. They're buying into the naval more than the baby blue, which I enjoy. This one, I don't love. This one, I'm, I'm here for. I'm here for. Again, as long as it's better than this, that's all you can really ask for. My main complaint is the main complaint I have about majority of sports logos, so I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but they come off as too minimalistic, and they're very safe. And again, I understand it, right? You'd rather have every one of your fans be, ve be very neutral about a logo versus 50% of fans hate it, and 50% of fans love it. You know, so I understand being very neutral, but the circular minimalistic logo has been overdone. And I just would love for a team to say, hey, we don't really care about keeping it uh, a traditional at this point. Let's go back to what logos used to look like. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's just the old head of me. Let's get to the actual court. The court, I enjoy this. I enjoy this court. Uh, I read an article about the lighting that they're putting together in the Intuit Dome. And I think that these colors will pop a little bit. So I'm here for that. Uh, the, the jerseys are cool. I don't hate the jerseys. Again, it's still minimalistic, but I actually think that's okay. The white jersey, I like a lot. I think that the script that they give these jerseys is perfect. I cannot complain about that whatsoever. Now, this one, I don't love. I, I don't know exactly what it is about this jersey. Maybe Kawhi Leonard's not a good model. James Harden look enthusiastic. Kawhi Leonard doesn't, but I don't love these jerseys. But the red, we're going to get to this red. This is the one. If I was ever going to get a Clippers jersey in my life, it would be this one. I don't think I will unless one of my favorite players end up on that team. I, I, I don't think I will, but if I was going to do it, it would be this one. So I think overall, they did a really good job, all things considered. I would give this entire rebrand like a B to B plus, honestly. I mentioned the timing. I think the timing of this, and it might have already been set in stone, hey, it's a Monday, the beginning of a new news cycle, but last night they played a game against the Sacramento Kings and they lost. There's no, there's no I was going to say surprise, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but the Sacramento Kings obviously a very good basketball team. The Clippers were without Paul George, so it makes sense that they lost this game. It's not about losing the game or even how they lost the game, it's about what happened after they lost. 12 seconds left in this game, let's, let's, pl let's play the footage, you're going to see how damning this really is. Music to our ears from L.A. to Sacramento. That is something uh, that you don't want to do or you don't want to hear on your home court, especially because Sacramento is such a small market in comparison to Los Angeles. So for a team to come into your arena, beat you, and have the fans chant like the beam, that's not great. Now, obviously, again, they're getting a new arena now and the new jerseys and stuff. So maybe that'll change. It'll flip on his head. But the market size between Sacramento and Los Angeles is pretty. There's a huge gap there. So you don't want this type of stuff to happen. Now, when you see like a Lakers versus Clippers, it makes sense that the Lakers fans are going to outnumber them because no matter what you think, it is a reality that Los Angeles is a Laker town. And it has been and it probably always will be. You know, so it, it makes sense that it's going to be more Lakers fans than Clippers fans in a game where they're heading against each other. But Sacramento versus Clips? Oh, I don't like that. And maybe the, the Kings fans are the vocal minority. That it's not that many of them in there, but boy, are they voices loud. I don't really know. But it's still not an amazing look. And you're like, hey, here's some new jerseys. And remember, we got our new arena opening up. So don't even worry about this from last night. Don't worry about it. Now, now one thing that has been true um, and, and will probably be true for a long time 
is again that this is a Lakers city. It's a Lakers town. If you if you listen to a uh, Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart's podcast, they had Mikael Bridges on, and obviously uh, we're talking about different cities between Brooklyn and New York City. But the state of New York is a Knicks city, and they talked about how when you're at the Barclays Center, if feels like a home game for the away team more likely than not. And that is kind of the vibes you get from the Clippers sometimes, specifically when the Lakers aren't. And this is a thing that is, I guess, under-talked about as far as the Kawhi Leonard, Paul George era. In this article, um, they talked about, according to their internal studies, this is from the Clippers directly, the Clippers have doubled their overall fan base in the past seven years, team officials said. They want to double it again going forward. And that's that's huge, right? That is huge. Um, over the last seven years, of course, they brought in Kawhi, they brought in Paul George, and you, undoubtedly, you can see just by going onto Twitter that there are a lot more Clippers fans now than there were, again, seven to ten years ago. But I remember when Kawhi Leonard first signed to the Los Angeles Clippers. This was a marketing campaign um, from New Balance. This is his city. And one thing that has been under talked about in this era is that they haven't been able to market the players that are Kawhi Leonard and Paul George to see more of a growth. Again, like doubling your fan base in seven years is huge. But I feel like it should be more considering how good Kawhi Leonard is and how marketable Paul George has been throughout his entire career. Again, he's good at basketball too, but PG had his own signature sneaker. Um, uh, Kawhi Leonard has his own signature sneaker. Like it should be way more fans there. Part of that is during the Kawhi Leonard era, those guys had played 36% of their games together until this year. So it's hard to grow a fan base when you're tuning into a Clippers game and it's Kawhi or Paul, jo Paul George instead of Kawhi and Paul George. Again, we're seeing that change now. Even Kawhi Leonard, after this game, he was asked about why he's playing more. He was like, hell, I didn't tear my meniscus. I didn't tear my ACL, so I'm actually healthy, right? That plays a huge, huge part of it. But over the last five years of it being Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, we haven't seen them bridge that gap to their fan base as much as you would expect it. And it was one of the reasons why they, they knew that they had to get out of Staples slash Crypto.com Arena. And if it was to ever flip on his head, <laughs> that somehow Los Angeles becomes a Clippers town. It probably won't happen in our lifetime, um, but they would have to have an immense amount of success. Like the one thing that the Lakers have been able to do to help build that, of course, the championships matter, right? Having double digit championships, almost 20 championships, if I round up a little bit, matters a ton to keeping a core, core fan base because more likely than not, the Lakers are going to be competitive enough to, to compete for a championship. The Clippers haven't had that throughout their career just yet. But another thing that the LA Lakers have done so greatly over the last, I don't know, 70 years is take care of their star players when they have them. They always, always, always try to prioritize keeping their star players happy and healthy. And that is something that the Clippers need to figure out um, during the this phase of the Kawhi Leonard Paul George era and whatever phase happens next. And it is, it is so important it is so important when we talk about this and growing the fan base over the next 20 to 30 years because it, it's going to take a long time, right? It is so very important that this Clippers team wins one. I can't express to you how important that really is because most star players, if they're hitting free agency and we talk about how the Lakers have been able to build over the course of their 100 years, a lot of it is like, well, we're going to draft well and we're going to use those players to potentially get an Anthony Davis or we're just going to be like, hey, we're the Lakers, come sign us X player and that X player ends up being LeBron James. One of the reasons why LeBron James will opt to LA is that he knows that ownership and the front office is not gonna leave any stone unturned when it comes to putting him slash them in the right position to win a championship. And the Clippers need some jewelry for the next generation of stars that might hit free agency to think about the Clippers. Nets fans, close your ears here. Clo close your ears here because you're not gonna wanna hear this. I believe because the Kevin Durant, uh, Kyrie Irving, and eventually James Harden thing did not work out, that when the next star player is available and he's thinking about New York, he's not thinking about the Brooklyn Nets because he saw the last time they brought in superstar players on free agency, it didn't work out well. This team had Kevin Durant and Kawhi Leonard. I went to three games in the Barclays Center in a span of a month, and they never felt like a home game. They're the little brother. The Clippers have the, uh, the opportunity 
to win a championship and kind of switch things. Again, it's, ne it's never going to be a Clippers town, at least in our lifetime, but switch it so that the Clippers are a viable, viable option again for free agency. When Kawhi Leonard and Paul George ended up there, th this is an experimentation, baby. This is experimentation, just like when you saw Kyrie Irving look at Kevin Durant in his eyes and say two max spots when they were in Chicago for All-Star Weekend. It was an experimentation because Brooklyn had not been a team that was been competent enough to compete for a championship. We can be those guys to do that. And that closed, and I think it is closed for some time for Brooklyn when it comes to signing star players. The Clippers, it's wide open right now. They're one of the best teams in basketball, and they need some jewelry for the next generation to say, oh, yeah, the Clippers can get it done. We saw them get it done with Kawhi Leonard. We saw them mortgage their future to bring in James, and it worked out perfectly. And I'm the next star player, and I kind of want to have that experience. <laughs> yes, I got all the way there based on a rebranding. But it is a reality in my eyes. So let me know what you think about the Clippers rebranding. Um, again, I, I would probably give it like a B to B plus. I enjoy it. It's not perfect, but it is what it is. Clippers fans, you let me know. Because this logo is really for you. It's not for me. So you let me know what you think.